you know what? Like, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it's just me. But, like, I look around and I see so many franchises that I used to love and adore just losing their way. And I can base this just, just looking at how advertising was back in the early 2000s in the PS2 and the PS3 era compared to now. And we look at specific franchises and, and these franchises just happen to be Ubisoft titles for the most part. We have Splinter Cell. I'm gonna throw a trailer on screen for Splinter Cell Chaos Theory and just look at it. And you know what? Deal with the fact that it's 240p. Okay, this was a different time. But just look at it. Night Vision, there's Snap and Necks, and it's very stealthy. Fast forward to Blacklist, which was the most recent Splinter Cell game, and there's car explosions, sniper shots, busting through windows, AK 47, and it's just crazy stealth action. It's a nice hybrid. They're moving away from what made the original games good. Okay, now let's take a look at Ghost Recon. I'm going to throw a trailer up here. Thanks to Machinima Trailer Vault. I'm going to throw a trailer up here for Ghost Recon 2. Again, shitty quality, but it was a different time. In this trailer, the Ghost team happened to run into a huge convoy of tanks, jeeps, and basically a whole fuck ton of enemies. What do they do? They avoid it. They take to the trees, and they use stealth to their advantage. Why? Because they're ghosts. Who would have guessed, right? And now I'm gonna play the mission briefing Ghost Recon Wildlands trailer that is announcing the fact that they're having a beta sign up. So if you guys haven't signed up for the beta, and trust me, trust me, you're gonna wanna play this before you purchase it. The link is down below. So in this trailer, they like to start off with a, a couple of night scenes where you're going in kind of stealthy. And then the rest of the trailer is them like ramping trucks over trains and fucking explosions and like riding boats and just all this crazy Michael Bay type shit. And I see this and I'm like, God fucking damn it. What happened? When I look at Rainbow Six as a franchise dating back to, what was it, like 98? 99 I can't even remember back in the day up until now the only thing where where Rainbow Six really took a turn was with Vegas Rain I thought Rainbow Six Vegas and Vegas 2 were a little bit more over-the-top action I always looked at Rainbow Six as like the 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 Tom Clancy version of SOCOM and with Vegas they took a turn in a different direction it was it was still operatives but it just it felt different and with Siege it it also feels different Siege feels different from Vegas Siege feels different from all the old Rainbow Sixes Siege is its own thing but it's still to me it falls under that Rainbow Six umbrella your operatives com completing missions, even though Siege is like multiplayer, it still felt like you were in there completing missions. And, and so I, like, I, I get the change, but the fact is, is there's still changes. And it, it begs the question, like, why, why do game franchises adapt like that? What is the reason? A lot of people like to attribute it to the market change and the fact that there's a bunch of kids who are now in the market who love that balls to the walls off the fucking wall shooters uh, and that's why we have games like Advanced Warfare, uh, Black Ops 3 and now we have um, Infinite Warfare. And on one hand I, I kind of agree, I get it, the market has shifted. But in the same breath, back in the day they had games like Quake and Unreal Tournament, the true arena shooters of their time. And those were the fast paced games of that time. And I feel like even those games have fallen to the wayside. Like we can talk about tactical shooters all we want. The, the arena shooter has fallen to the wayside as well. We haven't seen an Unreal Tournament game. I know there's one in Alpha right now, but we haven't seen one actually like release since I believe Unreal Tournament 3 which was in 2008. We could look at games like SOCOM 1 and 2 moving into games like Confrontation and SOCOM 4. The changes made to that one were immense. I mean, we went from having 16 players in a game in SOCOM 2 to having 32 players in huge, vast battlefield open style maps in SOCOM 3. And then Confrontation did this kind of like hybrid where they had 32 player rooms, but the map design wasn't meant for vehicles like it was in SOCOM 3. And then we had that absolute Frankenstein that was SOCOM 4. Garbage. Garbage game. So the point I'm trying to make, you look around at the community and you ask yourself, what is the most popular shooter out right now? 
what are people playing? What are people watching with with this emergence of esports? What what is that fucking shooter title? And the answer, surprisingly, is Counter Strike Global Offensive. We have all these games in the shooter genre that have changed and tried new things throughout the years. And you have Counter Strike Global Offensive that has stuck to the exact same formula, the same maps, the same core design principles for how many fucking years? And it is the most popular shooter on Twitch. Sometimes Overwatch takes it, shut the fuck up, I get it. But it is the most popular shooter on the internet right now. And it hasn't changed a goddamn thing in like 20 years. And we have games like SOCOM and Rainbow Six and Splinter Cell and Ghost Recon. They've changed their formula so much. Trying to chase success, trying to compete with Call of Duty numbers. And trust me, that is one of the reasons that SOCOM 4 was created. And that is one of the main reasons why SOCOM 4 failed was because they're trying to chase those numbers that were unobtainable. And now we even look at Call of Duty. They they were the top. They were the top of their game when we had Modern Warfare 2, when we had Black Ops 1, even Black Ops 2. And they went to Advanced Warfare and continually downgraded themselves every year because they changed too much about themselves we can sit here all day and talk about call of duty back in the day do you guys remember hearing oh it's just a copy of the last year oh it's just a copy of the last year it's just a reskin it's just a reskin you know what reskins of shooters are successful and that is it, it, it is a proven thing now we can look at Counter-Strike and we can look at Call of Duty back in 2007 to 2010 and look at it. It was the same game in both cases. Every single year it was the same thing. Counter-Strike didn't release every single year, but people were playing it every single year, right? As soon as Call of Duty changed and added the, the boost jumping and all that shit, it started going downhill. And the funny thing about this conversation is you could talk about this in almost any genre. We can talk about this in MMOs. The best MMO of all time still is World of Warcraft because it took what it does well and fucking handled it and did the same thing for years. And then we look at the changes they made during Mists and during Warlords of Draenor and people fell out. And now we have Legion come out and they promise that they're bringing the game back to when people enjoyed it and it is doing extremely well. And th that just proves it. Change in genres of games, in franchises, isn't always the best move for you to make. And it's an interest it's an interesting thing because you can't please both camps. There are people like me who think you should stick to the formula that works. And there are always going to be people that think you should change it up. And as is with every discussion that I try to have on the channel, there's going to be people who are going to point to, uh, let, let's get an example of Battlefield. Battlefield has done a very good job of changing things every time they come out and they're still thriving. All right, Battlefield has broken that norm. But in the same breath, Battlefield has never been as big as Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So, yes, it has found success, but it hasn't found that, that long-term consistent success. There's always hits and misses in that franchise. So, that's an example that we could go to and look at, but realize that it's not even sitting at the same level that Call of Duty was back during Modern Warfare 2 and, and Black Ops. It wasn't sitting at the same level that Counter-Strike was. So while we can reference it, it it's still kind of kind of the same point. We have so many franchises that are out there trying to chase that success that they think they're going to find. And in turn, doing so alienates the community you once had and is a very big risk in trying to capture the community that you want. And that's an interest it's an interesting topic. 
I could talk a lot more about it and I could come up with a lot more examples. So if you guys want to discuss this topic down in the comments below, I really, I really look forward to it. I need the comments on this one because this is an interesting one. And like I said, I'm sure you guys are going to find points and examples that are going to negate it. And that's fine, man. That's a, that's, it's good discussion regardless. But I saw a comment on one of the forum pages that I visit, uh, therealsocom.com, and they were talking about how Counter-Strike hasn't changed and how it's still really successful. And of course, they were referencing it against SOCOM and the changes that SOCOM made. And with that, I just wanted to expand and reach out. I mean, fuck me, Halo. Halo is another prime example of changes hurting your game. Halo was the top. Halo fucking took MLG to the next level. And now where is it? Crazy. There's so many examples to choose from. And I want to hear some of your guys' in the comments below. If you made it this far in the video, this was kind of a longer one. Use the keyword change. Hashtag that down below. And that lets me know you guys made it to the end of this video. This is an interesting discussion. And one that I'm actually really excited that I recorded. So thank you guys for watching. Shout out to the Fry Nation. I'll see you on the next one.